Hello, 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 and welcome back to the final video in this series. Which solar panels and inverters should I buy for my home? This is part four in the series. The first was, is your home a good candidate for solar panels? The second was, how much money would solar save you? The third was, the best way to go solar. You know, there are so many options. And this final one is to help you choose the solar panels and inverters which are great for your home. Now we'll talk a little bit about the solar system, how it is constructed, and of course we'll get down to what the best panels and inverters are. So we're primarily talking about roof mounted as you can see here and ground mounted systems. Now installation is best done by a professional solar installer because there is a huge process of permitting, getting permissions from the state as well as from your local township, and then the actual professional installation. As you can see, this is a solar panel system installed on your roof. It involves installation of what are known as rackings. These are like rails. They're parallel on your roof. Each of them are anchored onto the rafters on your roof with systems like PV quick mount. And these are fully flashed, vacuum sealed. They're never going to leak. Some of the worries about solar installations is, is my roof going to leak? It's really a non-issue if it's been done by a good installer. The third item you see on the roofs are those microinverters. That's our preferred inverter solution for solar systems. We'll be talking about that a little later in the video. But the next type of installation that you're going to see in homes is the ground mount. If you notice, these are actually built on the ground. They involve concrete piers to be built in, holes to be made, different racking systems. So obviously, these are significantly more expensive than a roof mounted system at least budget 15% or more than a roof mounted system if you're looking at a ground mounted solar system. Right, so the next thing that we're gonna look at now are the balance of systems. I mean, you've got the, the racking, you've got the inverter, what happens next? So you see that the panels are put up on the roof that's on the left of your picture. Each of those panels in our current system have microinverters and each one of them 20 panels, then 20 microinverters. Then on the side of your home, you're gonna have a combiner box. This is gonna have solar breakers and you're gonna have a monitoring device there to measure how much power your solar system is gonna make. This is gonna be new. It's a small box like you can see there on the side of your wall. The existing electric meter might be replaced by a new digital meter by your utility company, but that's gonna remain. And the other new thing would be that small solar disconnect. Now this is the best architecture we like because it's got very little on the side of your home. Just that combiner box and the solar disconnect. There are other architectures like optimizers and inverters where you have big boxes placed on the side of your wall. Not only is that ugly, it's also a point of failure. We'll be talking about that a little later. Now let's look at solar panels for your home and which panels are really best for you. So the best panels today in the middle of 2020 are in the power range of 300 watts or more. Most of these are in the 300, 320, 330 range. There are some which are 350, 360, which are a little more expensive. Higher wattage than that, 370 onwards, 400 are available, but these are usually larger. Now remember, more watts in a panel is not necessarily better. As long as you're able to fit the maximum number of watts on your roof, you're good. You can use 300 watt panels and if you're able to put more watts up on your roof, that is a better choice than using 370 watt panels and putting less watts on your roof. Remember, higher wattage panels are more expensive and it's always a better choice to put more power and more watts on your roof. For example, given the choice of putting 30 300 watt panels which add up to 13 to 300 9000 watts versus putting 25 350 watt panels which add up to 8750 watts lesser than the first choice i would always go with the 300 watt panel choice put 9000 watts up on the roof instead of 8750 most of the top manufacturers make panels which are equally good and the best factor for your home solar system is put the maximum amount of power on your roof. So even if you have 320 watt panels, but you've got more watts up there, you're better off than having a higher powered panel, but with less number of total watts. Now, panel sizes are important. 
Standard sizes today are about 39 inches into 65 inches. There are some panel manufacturers who will tout 400 or 450 watt panels or even 370, 80 watt panels. Remember, those are larger panels. The easy way to spot the difference is, of course, the size. The other is something known as the number of cells. 60 cell panels are normally smaller sized. The 72 cell ones are the larger variety. A caveat, a Hanwad does make something known as a half cell and they have more cells in their panels, but the size is the same 39 by 65. So those are equally good as compared to other 60 cell panels. Lastly, a note on solar shingles from Tesla. A lot of people ask questions about them. These are fairly new. Very few homes have got them right now. They are in the R&D phase. I would advise against going for these unless you just want to show off. But for now, these are horrendously expensive. The reliability is a question mark. Let Elon Musk work through the kinks before you think of investing in them. And just an FYI, a system using normal panels, if it is 50 or 25,000, the same system if you buy with solar shingles will cost you three times. That's right, 75 to 100 grand for a regular 25K system. So that may not be the best choice of investing your money. Now, let's get back to which solar panels you should buy. Tier one manufacturers, Silfa, Panasonic, Longi, Hanwa, makes Q cell, SunPower, Trina Solar, LG, Solaria. These are some which I'm just shooting off straight off for you, but there are more. Make sure you're buying panels which are 19% efficient or more. That's a good benchmark today in 2020. In a couple of years, it might go up, but for today, 19% is really at the cutting edge. All these manufacturers have plants. They've been building panels. They're tier one. They've been doing this for 30, 40 years. Very, very reliable. Do not worry about the panel brand manufacturer. Look for the best deal. Look for the best deal as long as it's one of these tier one manufacturers. Black on black panels are normally better looking, as you can see in the picture. So that's a choice that you should make. Unless you have panels at the back of the roof of your home and, and nobody can see them, then if you get a better deal on now panels which are not black on black, but the same wattage, go for them. Now we actually come to the most important decision you're gonna make about your solar system, which is about the inverter that you buy. The panels are, like I said, very good, but the inverter choices are limited. There are two which are doing well today, microinverters from Enphase, and optimizers from solar edge we go for the microinverters from n phase because their architecture is very open everything is ac a local electrician or a handyman can work in them flexibility is great tomorrow if you want to add more panels it is so much easier to do it with an n phase based system if you want to replace an old panel 15 years in the future with a new new one go ahead and do it n phase lets you do it easily. Our second choice is the optimizer from Solar Edge. Optimizers are great like Enphase. They also optimize production from your solar panels. One optimizer under each solar panel. Where we think they score a little less is the DC architecture they have. Everything is DC for the optimizers down from your roof to that large verter box which will be there on the side of your roof. That's something which is missing with Enphase. You don't have an inverter on the side of your home. You probably could end up having two inverters with Solar Edge. These inverters, they talk to the optimizers on top. So if the inverter goes bad, the entire system goes kaput. Now, solar installers, a lot of them will recommend optimizers to you. And the reason they do is, is A, it's good technology. B, is it's cheaper for them to install. So they make larger margins. So if you have the choice, go for Enphase microinverters. Optimizers are not a bad choice, but we think Enphase does a better job. So a third choice, which we haven't discussed much, is the string inverter, which is something that's mostly used for commercial installs and not really applicable in this case. So between the two, as you can see in this comparison chart, optimizing or panel level, making sure that the panels, each of them are making the maximum power regardless of the light conditions of the shade. Both optimizers and inverters do a great job where the end phase score is they don't have a string inverter, which is another point of failure, a single point of failure that fails, the entire system goes down. And of course, 
DC versus AC. AC is so much easier to use. A handyman can work on it. So to summarize, our recommendations for panels and inverters are use a tier one brand. Any brand which is tier one will do 300 watts or more. Maximize the number of panels on your roof, the number of panels there, the number of watts there. Make sure you have panels which are 19% efficient or more. And then choose either micro or in phase microinverters or solar edge optimizers. We tend to think microinverters are a little better, but either would do the job. And that's it. You are set with the best solar system on your roof. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the last in my series. There are three more prior to this. Have a look at them if you have the time. I hope you enjoyed this. Please do subscribe to my channel by clicking on the logo right at the bottom on the right. Have a great one and I hope you enjoy solar.